Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're out here at the uh, downtown section of uh, uh, in North Carolina at Wilson. Praise the Lord. We're out here to be a witness. We're out here to be a testimony for Jesus. Jesus said for us to let our light so shine before men that they may good, see our good works to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Another scripture tells us in the authorized King James Version of the Bible that we are his witnesses. And a true witness delivers souls. That's what we're out here to do at downtown Wilson, North Carolina, at Worldsburg Park, at Keenan Street and Goldsboro Street. Beautiful day down here in North Carolina. And we're out here in the downtown section of the historic Wilson to be a testimony for Jesus, to shine our lights, to lift up the name of Jesus, because you've got to realize that there's no other name under heaven by which men might be saved. It's not Allah, it's not Buddha, nor Hail Mary, and it's certainly not Mohammed that will save you. There's only one man who lived upon the earth and was perfect and had no sin. It's his blood that can make you free. He's come to save you from your sins and not in your sins. Jesus was the God man. And Jesus has not called us upon the earth just to be good men and good women. There's a lot of good men and good women on the earth. And there's a lot of religious people with piety. But if you want a religious life then you can choose any religion that you want. But if you choose life, you choose Jesus. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, according to John 14 and verse 6. There is no other way. And if you climb up any other way, the Bible says the fame is a thief and a robber. And another scripture says you've got to come in through the door. Jesus is that door. He is the good shepherd. And when you come in that door, he will give you a wedding garment. Oh. And when you take on his righteousness, your righteousness becomes as filthy rags. There's no other name, my friend, under heaven by which men might be saved. This is the name we lift up today as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness. Even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Drugs, alcohol, and all what's going on in the world today is destroying men. But the Bible speaks in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13 that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said there would be a time of great perplexity. There would be a time of, of deceivers. And there would be a time of false Christs and false prophets uh, in the land teaching damnable heresies and lies in hypocrisy. But Jesus had commanded us to preach the word and be instant in season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke. All word of God is given for instruction. This is what we're trying to shine today. We're not pointing you to man's religion. No, we're not pointing you no other direction. No creeds and no traditions can save you. It's only Jesus Christ that can save you. Look no for, further than to look to Jesus, which is the author and the finisher of your faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's not God's many. Paul stood up on Mars Hill and he challenged them because they were a superstitious bunch and they were a religious bunch. And he said, I see an altar made to an unknown God. And this is what Paul preached, the same what Paul preached, we preach. We preach Christ crucified. The Bible says we preach the word of the gospel, which is the good news of the gospel by the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. We can't preach it no other way. It's God in Christ and Christ in us by the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God. You can't live this life without the Spirit of God. You might quit this. You might quit that. 
on your own. But if Jesus is in you, I like what Paul said, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. This is the Christ we preach. This is the Christ we lift up. As Moses lifted up that brass serpent on a pole in the wilderness where they were bitten by fiery serpents. You might not have a fiery serpent or a snake biting you today, but I can guarantee you that sin and iniquity is biting you and the avenger of the blood is after you. Let not sin be your, renew, your ruin and let not iniquity reign in your mortal flesh for your sin will surely find you out and the wages of sin is death. It will never change. But as Moses raised up that brass serpent on that pole in the wilderness, all those that were bitten, you might be bitten by sin, you might be bitten by a deathly disease, you might be in a wheelchair, you might be ready to draw your last breath, you might be getting shot by a gun or a shotgun or taking your last overdose and pushing that needle into your arm. But if you would look, my friend, you will live. These are the promises Jesus promised us. He promised us life and life more abundantly. And if we receive him, we receive him who sent him. That's what the scripture tells us. We got no other choice but to trust in the Bible because he said though heaven and earth pass away, he said his word will never pass away. Peter said the elements of this earth would melt with fervent heat, but that word in God endureth forever. Jesus was God manifested in his flesh, and he said in the beginning was this word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Who? Jesus. Jesus spoke the word in the world into existence. And he said, if we take up our cross and follow him, that we will obtain like precious faith and eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, my friend. It's time. Harvest time. The book of Revelations talks about a time of a harvest. The book of Revelation talks about a time of great woe, a time of perplexity, a time of the seals being unleashed, a time of a trumpet being sounded. Make no mistake about it, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven at the sound of an archangel and the blasting of a great trumpet. These are promises that God's people have got to obtain and lay hold. Paul said, lay hold on eternal light and fight the good fight of faith. We're here to proclaim to you what the simplicity of the gospel is. John 3 and 16, the Bible states, Whosoever shall believe in him, shall have eternal life. And did you know the word whosoever means anyone, who, whichsoever, or whatsoever. So the promises is to everyone. Faith is the most powerful weapon that you could have. He that comes to God must believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. By faith the elders obtain the promises of God. By faith, Noah being moved of God with fear built the ark wherein eight souls were only saved. It's not many in all. It's few and chosen. I preach that you, you don't have to die for Jesus. He wants you to live for him. It's a lot harder to live for God and this crooked and perverse generation. And that's the generation that we're in. Jesus said it's a seven times wicked more generation. A, de a generation of serpents and vipers. Sin and iniquity in the land, but always through time and all the way back to the very beginning, God had righteous people stand, stand up that lived right and walked right, not of their own righteousness. That's not what I'm preaching, creeds and traditions. But praise God, when we take on Christ and Christ begins to dwell in your heart by faith, he will be the liver in you. 
I'm preaching to you that whosoever will. Let him call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. That's a promise to all those that call upon the name of the Lord. Joel prophesied that in the last days, that's these days, upon my handmaids and servants, he'll pour out his spirit. Your young men will see vision, your old men dream dreams. And he's going to pour out his spirit. If we ever needed an outpouring, if we ever needed a touch of God, America needs a touch of God now. America needs to come back to God. That's what we're preaching. Revival, our sole purpose of being here in Wilson, North Carolina, is to preach about a soon coming revival and an outpouring of God's spirit, a return to God. Like the Bible says, if my people call by my, my name, humbles themselves to pray and seeks my face and turns from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven. You want to hear from God? You want to hear from heaven? You want to be touched of God? Don't go to a religion. Don't do, go to man's creeds. But look no further than the Bible. Because the Bible is God's word. And God's word is life. Jesus said my words are spirit. And my words are life. Jesus said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm preaching to you today a little bit about whosoever. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, the Bible says, shall never die. That's John 11, 26. Acts 10 and 43, the Bible said, whosoever believeth in him shall have remission of sins. Luke 24, 47 says, repentance and remission of sins shall be preached. Why? Because there cannot be a revival without repentance. John the Baptist came preaching repentance and remission of sins, and Jesus came right behind him as John the Baptist had to decrease and Jesus increased. Praise God. You need an increase. You need the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in you to walk circumspectly and walk uprightly. Because you can't live right by yourself. Amen. You need greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Simply putting on a dress or simply, praise God, quitting cigarettes or, or simply going to a rehab center and, and, and ditching drugs is not going to save you. It's not of your righteousness. It's only by faith in the blood and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've got to do something to activate your faith. You've got to call upon him. And when he knows you mean business, he will answer by and by. It's like that prayer wheel turning. He's, he knows those that are his. And as he's passing by, it's time to call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus said in Mark 8 and 35 that whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. You cannot follow Jesus without taking up the cross. There is a cross. The true meaning of the cross is repentance and self-denial and, and living for God. Not just living your own life and, and the one who dies in this world with the most toys wins. No, it's not like that. If you could gain the whole world and lose your own soul, my friend, it wouldn't profit you nothing. No matter what kind of money and what kind of 401k you have, no matter how much land you obtain, and no matter if you're Bill Gates himself or, or, or Jeff Bezos that owns Amazon, all the money in the world will help you. Your money will perish with you, for it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for the rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. God rich in mercy. He said in Mark 8 and 35, whosoever will, there's that name again, whosoever, there's that word, will save his life, shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall save it. You have got to lose your life in this world. You have got to forsake all. I like what the Bible says. Any man that puts his hands to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot look back. You cannot look into the world and go back into the world. And, and, a, and a exodus from uh, Egypt to the promised land, many of the people that were uh, traveling to the 
promised land or traveling to the land of Goshen where God had provided a, a, a great blessing for them. There rose up a man named Korah and he, and he was like a false prophet and he preached to the people to turn back with the God that we're back in Egypt eating gun, onions and garlic. No, it's not a time to look back. The Bible says uh, through the mouth of Jesus, the Bible says, Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife during the time uh, where the angels came down in that wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's the nation and that's the day and time that we're in now. We're in a wicked generation of effeminate. We're in a time where men with men and women with women that Jesus warned us about. No effeminate. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. No effeminate shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Whosoever shall receive one children in my name receives me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth me, not me, but him that sent me. So if you receive this word that we're preaching today, you're receiving the word of God, then you're receiving Jesus. You're, you're receiving one of God's children. Amen. It's very important to receive and to accept and acknowledge your sin. He said, uh, uh, turn to me from your wicked ways and acknowledge your sin and he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. See, we are able ministry. So what are you? Who are you? Why are you here in the town square today? Well, we're here to tell you about a man named Jesus. We're here to tell you about deliverance. We're here about to tell you about somebody that can save anybody and everybody. There's not one that turn, is, he's going to turn back he said, whosoever will, that's you that's out there. Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven against him. There's only one sin that we preach that can't be forgiven him. So he said, well, I've gone too far. And said, no, you haven't gone too far. Praise God. I used to think that myself, that I did too much sin for God to forgive me. No, all sin can be forgiven of you. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. If thou shalt confess with your mouth, my friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, the power of life and death is in your tongue. You have got to confess it for yourself. It's not enough for Brother Ron to confess it. It's not enough for the preacher to confess it. You have got to confess the Lord Jesus Christ out of your own mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible said the mouth speaks. So you have got the power of life and death in your tongue to speak the word only. This is the word of faith that we preach. That faith is alive. Amen. The Bible said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 11, 6 says, Whosoever shall not be offended in me is blessed. If you want to be blessed, you cannot be offended at the word of God. Too much offense is taken at Jesus. You must make your own calling and election sure. And the Bible says you must be born again. Marvel not, you must be born again. And he said, except you repent. In Luke 13, you shall likewise perish. The word perish means Separation from God, eternal separation from God is death. I want life. Whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed, the Bible said. Whosoever believeth shall not abide in darkness. See, we're in a dark time where the, the uh, prophet Isaiah seen gross darkness will be upon the people and gross darkness upon the land. But he told us to arise and shine for the glory of God has risen. We're preached to you, not a dead Christ. You won't find him in the tomb. Praise God, he's alive forevermore. That tomb is empty. That's what I like about Jesus. He said, I'm alive forevermore. I'm Alpha, I'm Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. There's none other beside him. Look no for, further than Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. And whosoever that stone will fall upon, it will grind him to powder. you got to learn to trust him. You trust in the doctors, don't you? You trust in your insurance companies, don't you? Well, now it's time to put your trust in Jesus. 
It's time to invest in uh, 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 a, a life uh, eternal policy. And that insurance is only activated through Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. Amen. Grace through faith by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because when you die, praise God, it's, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. That he said, my friend, after this judgment, make no mistake about it. The books will be open. The Bible said, hallelujah, we judged of the 66 books of the Bible. And we're going to give an account for the deeds done in our body. And in every idle word that we have spoken, we're going to give an a, a account for. And one scripture said he's going to take an account. My friend. I'm telling you about a water that you can drink of and never die. Hallelujah. Jesus said, whosoever believeth in me shall never die. He said, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. If you drink natural water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of the water of this word, and if you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you will have eternal life. See, the saints got hard in John 6 and verse 66, and many of his disciples turned around and walked no more with him. This is not a time to turn from the word, but this is a time to run to Jesus. I'm not talking about joining a church, amen. A fellowship's good, amen. A house church is good, but praise God, you've got to get the Bible down for yourself, and you've got to apply yourself in prayer, and you have some neology. I didn't get none of this by theology. I got this by neology. Paul said, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Praise God, God has got to visitate America one more time. We need a visitation of the Holy Ghost. We need the angels to come down. We need the power of God manifested again and he said he would do it in the book of Joel he said at times of refreshments if we hold fast to Jesus we'll not be ashamed my friend but we have to learn obedience through the things that we suffer Jesus suffered in the flesh and if you suffer in flesh long enough you will cease from sin hopefully because the bible said he that being often reproved if you get often reproved if you harden your neck you suddenly be cut off and that without remedy i want to get to the point where i'm stiff necked and hard-hearted but i want to be alive in christ the bible says in luke 14 33 whosoever be you of that forsaketh not all he has cannot be my disciple a disciple is one that disciplines himself after Jesus Christ. You have got to discipline yourself. You have got to put your flesh down. You have got to crucify your flesh like John the Baptist did. He said, I must decrease so he can increase. Jesus has got to be the increase in your life. If you want revival, get a hold of revival. Revival starts in you. It starts with you in prayer. It starts with you in fasting. It starts with you in crying out to God. It starts in you with true repentance. True repentance means you turn from and you touch not, you taste not, and handle not the things of this world. Yes, it sounds wild. Yes, it sounds far out. Uh, can you do it? Yes, you can do it. Uh, it is possible for you to obtain like precious faith. It is possible for you to obtain eternal life. In Matthew 7 and Luke 6, it talks, Whosoever cometh to me and hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to whom he is like. He is like the wise man that built his house upon the rock. You see, if you do not build upon this foundation that I'm preaching today, then you're built upon the sand. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, there's a coming a storm. A storm is going to hit America. A destruction is upon America. The Bible states that all nations that forget God will be turned into hell, my friend. And Jesus warned us in Matthew 7. He said, the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon that house, and that house fell, and great was the fall of it, because it was not built upon the rock. He told Peter, upon this rock, not a church, praise God, but on the revelation that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to him. That's the rock. That's the same rock that they had in the desert from Egypt going to the promised land. That rock is Christ. 
Jesus. And neither is there in salvation and any other name. His name alone. One Lord, one faith, one baptism in him, by him, for him. Let us all be subject to the high power, Romans 1 says. John, 1 John 4, 15 said, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God dwells in him and him and God. See, you have got to confess. You've got to learn the A, B, C, Ds of Jesus Christ. The basic, the Bible stands for the basic instructions before leaving earth. We have got instructions in the Bible, in the, in the prophets, in the words of the Lord. We have got a map set out before us. And if we follow them, it will lead to the celestial city. Where there's no more sin there. I like what the scripture says. The angel said in the book of Revelations, we overcame him. Who? The devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The Lord knows those are his. And we got to trust in the testimony of the blood of the lamb. And we have got to take it for ourselves. It's not enough just for your brother and sister to confess it. You have got to do what the scripture says. You've got to confess that Jesus is the son of God and believe in you might have life in his name. That's what the scripture says in John 20 and verse 30. But these scriptures are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ and believe in you will have life through his name. I did. I took Jesus as my Savior and those dead brain cells I had, God resurrected my mind. Hallelujah. He set me back on my feet. Praise God. He healed my lungs. Uh, he saved me. He touched my body and he told me to run. And hallelujah, I'm out here running the race for Jesus now. And you could do the same too if you learn to take up your cross and follow him. You want to be that wise man? Well, the Bible said the wise man, he that wins his souls is wise, my friend. We have got to be able to stand up against ridicule. Amen. We have got to be able to stand up with men, uh, 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 have, uh, say false lies and, and tell people uh, uh, about us and, uh, falsely. We have got to be able to pray for our enemies. And we've got to be able to love our enemies. We have got to do like Jesus said, learn to turn the other cheek. Amen. That's what a true disciple is and that's what a true Christian is. Mark 3 and 35, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. You're my brother, you're my sister if you hear the word of God and you do it. See, it's hard to do the word of God. We're not just preaching the word of God to you. We're trying to live the word of God. We're trying to implement the word of God and let Christ live in us. That's the difference. Amen. And when you got the helper, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, John 14, 15, 16, Jesus said, I'm the spirit of truth and I'm the comforter. That's what's missing. The born again experience. Marvel not, you must be born again. And the Bible teaches us in Mark 16 in the Bible. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs will accompany those that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Drink any deadly thing and won't hurt them. They shall take up serpents and they shall cast out devils and speak in other tongues. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The same Peter, Paul and John had the same experience they had in the upper room. That's what we believe. Amen. And you could have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, my friend, and fire. Hallelujah. Whosoever, there's that word again, shall confess me before men. Jesus said, I will confess you before the Father and the angels. Remember, I said the power of life and death is in your tongue. So if you take a bold stand for your confession, Jesus will acknowledge you and he will test you. You'll be tested and you'll be tried as fire. I had a dream about one time and, and this, uh, this brother was standing there with me and this man was hammering a gold, uh, a slab of gold with a hammer and he was beating the hammer and the brother said, no, he's going he's gonna to destroy the gold. He's going to mar the gold. He, he, he's, the gold. The gold is not going to be good anymore. And I said, no, watch what he's going to do. And after he was finished with that hammer, he beat the gold till it was transparent gold, the same transparent gold that's in heaven. Your gold has tried by fire my friend purified seven times in the furnace of affliction I've chosen you the Lord had said that's what the scriptures 
tells us. Amen. Revelations 2015, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So I'm preaching to you today, either you're in or you're out, either you're saved or lost. There's no great area with God. The Bible said, make your calling and election sure. I like what Elijah said and Moses said, those that are on God's side, let them stand up now. You have got to stand for something or you're going to fall for every evil work this, in this generation and in this time now of all the evil work and all this HBO and this showtime and all this lust of the flesh and the pride of life is not of God. He said submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's what the word says. And he warned us that whosoever loveth and maketh a lie shall have their part in the fire that burns with brimstone. Acts 13, 26, whosoever among you feareth God to you is the word of this salvation sent. If you fear God like Noah did, feared God and built the ark because he knew of the impending judgment of come. See, the book of Ezekiel says, if we, if we as a watchman that's upon the wall, if we see the sword come and don't warn you, he said that upon our hand would require the blood. We warn you that you sin not. We warn you that an impending judgment is coming to America and we implore you to repent knowing the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, the Bible says. That's our job as the watchmen on the wall. We're not dumb dogs that cannot bark. We bark and loud today and praise God. We're, we want you to make your calling election sure. And if there's one name that you can uh, name when we're done here tonight, it should be the name of Jesus. Whosoever among you feareth God to you is the word of this salvation sent. Your heirs of salvation, the Bible says. I like what G Jesus said. He said, he's a joint heir of Christ. He's the son of God. And we cry, Abba, Father. He is our father. And you might be backslid. Praise God. You might have uh, started out with God and started out with good intentions, but you've grown cold and lukewarm. Yeah, we can fix that by anointing you with oil and casting out the devil. If you've taken on some baggage since you got saved, that all could be fixed in a moment of time. It don't take all day. Praise God. That, hallelujah. We just got to lay hands on you. We believe in laying hands on you, anointing with oil. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. If you committed any sins, they shall be forgiven of you. It's that simple. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. James 4, 4 says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world as an enemy of God. I do not want to be an enemy of God. I want to be like Abraham. I want to be a friend of God. You do not want God and Jesus on, on against you. You want God for you. We got enough opposition in this land. We're facing the mark of the beast. We're facing a great trouble that's upon the land. We're, pray, we're facing famine. We're, place, we're, we're facing wars and rumors of war. We're facing the sea and the waves roaring. We're facing pestilence. We're actually, we're facing the four sword judgment of the book of Revelations chapter 6. So it's time to be covered with the blood. It's time to have a shield of faith around us. It's time to have a hedge of protection around us like Job had. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. I'm preaching to you that you can be born again. It's not just enough to confess the Lord with your mouth and say a sinner's prayer. That's good. That might be a start. The Our Father which art in heaven might be a start. Reciting the Psalms 23 might be a start. But ultimately you must be born again. Nicodemus was a ruler that came to Jesus by night and, and, G, and he told Jesus, marvel not, you must be born again. That which is the flesh is flesh, but that which is the spirit is spirit. You see, when you become born again, my friend, you start your walk with Christ and he, all things become new. 
And when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that's what I teach. I don't know what these others preach, but I baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ like the apostle said, baptize them in his name. In the name of Jesus. And you shall receive remission for your sins. Whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Joel 2 and 32. You, you do well to read the prophecy of Joel because there is coming a revival. I like what the book of Malachi says, the Lord whom you seek. Many of you that's out there watch these videos and many of you uh, hear uh, the, the word of God, but it's not enough just to hear the word of God. You've got to do it. You've got to live it. You've got to act upon it. For the five wise and the five foolish, the only difference was the five wise activated their faith and they stepped out by faith praise God and they responded to the cry of the bridegroom respond to the cry of the bridegroom today for the bridegroom cometh go you out to meet him make no mistake about it Jesus is coming back I don't care what these evil servants said in their heart the Lord delays his coming you might believe the Lord's delayed his coming but he's coming back Praise God. Make no mistake about it. At a sound of an archangel of a great trump, he's coming back uh, to set his feet upon the planet Earth again. He's coming back again to judge the world. See, he came to the world as the lamb to the slaughter, but this time coming back, he's coming back king of kings, my friend, and lord of lords. That's the Christ that we preached. Without the shedding of blood, my friend, there is no remission of sins. Let him that are thirst come. And let him take of the water of life freely. The woman at the wall, well, draw that water out. To praise God. But Jesus said, if you drink of this water, out of your belly shall flow, flow, shall flow rivers of living water. See, when you get Christ in you by the Holy Ghost, you got the liver inside of you. The first man, Adam, my friend, was a living soul. But the second man, Adam, became a quickening spirit. If you've never been touched before by Jesus Christ, if you haven't received the born again experience, let me tell you, he will quicken you. Your hairs will stand up on the back of your arm and your, and your neck and you will feel something. You will feel a heartfelt salvation and you will hear, feel a heartfelt yearning to serve the Lord. That's what it's all about, my friend. Serving the Lord in gladness. Make no mistake about it. Wilson, South Carolina, that the visit to North Carolina, the Lord is visiting you. We're from South Carolina. My name is Brother Ron and our team uh, from Vision for the World because we have a vision for the world to get saved. It's not just enough for you just to save your little household, two or three members of your household or your little church or your congregation. The vision is a little bit wider. Amen. It's the whole world. To the whole world, the gospel is preached. Jesus said, I said unto one, I say it unto all. It's not one set of rules for the Jew and for the Gentile. It's across the board. It's an even playing field. Jesus said it right. He said, you got to be born again. Marvel not. Don't marvel about this. That which is the flesh is flesh, but that which is the spirit is spirit. And when you get his spirit in you, his spirit will quicken you and it will touch you and then you will become born again seek the lord my friend while he may be found and call upon him while he is near this is brother ron our little team out here in north carolina today on uh, this beautiful day out here we drove out here and we're preaching the gospel by the holy ghost sent down from heaven god in christ god has made us able ministers of the new testament in Ambassadors for Christ. That's what a true preacher should be doing. Preaching Christ crucified. And I like what Paul said when he stood up to the Romans. Where many of the Ro uh, Romans killed many of God's people. Paul had the boldness to preach. Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. That's why I can preach the way I preach. Because I got Christ in me. The hope of glory. And I'm be and begging you. Imploring you. To behold the Lamb of God. That takes away the sin of the world. Take another look at the cross my friend. The cross means deliverance. The cross means salvation. The cross means take, taking it up. It's not enough just to wear a cross on you. But you've got to take up the cross 
daily to follow him to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and to be recognized by the Lord and Savior Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. May God richly bless you. God, I pray, God, that the power of the Holy Ghost visits this square in the future again. One more time, Lord, I ask you, God, to touch us by the Holy Ghost. Touch each one that's walked by. God, those that's heard the word, those that's given us the thumbs up, and those that have got their hands up over there, bless them, touch them, help all their families. Lord, I ask you, Jesus, to bring great deliverance. Answer every one of our prayers, God, that we prayed in the house, out of the house, on our knees, in the bathroom, in the car. Protect us, Lord God, and put the blessings of God will be blessed going out and blessed coming in, Lord, that we will be your disciples and followers. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God bless you, Wilson, North Carolina. Amen. Praise God.